Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Daniel, aka Daniela, and uh, I'm here with a little bit of good news. Uh, today, a racist Georgia couple was sentenced to 15 years in prison for terrorizing an African American family with Confederate flags and shotguns. I think this happened after the Dylan Ruth incident where he went into the church and, you know, shot and killed black people. These racist, evil pig skin. I don't even want to call them crackers because that gives them some, some type of, you're asserting some type of power with it. Because cracker refers to a white person cracking a black person with a whip. Nah. Pig skins. Cave apes. Cave monkeys. Pale translucent vampires. Whatever you want to call them. Other than, you know, giving that little bit of power. These people went up and terrorized this black family after that shooting happened. Uh, and of course, a bunch of those people who were killed in that church were nothing but coons anyways. But just the fact that they can, they, you know, they feel like they can kill black people. You know, they may end up killing some good, righteous black people. But in this case, it was, <laughs> of course, these white people went up there terrorize black people and sentenced to 15 years of prison. Watch this shit. This shit's hilarious. Let me turn this volume down a little bit. In July of 2015, just uh, weeks after the Charleston Church Massacre, a large group of people drove up to the party in Douglasville in trucks, flying Confederate flags. The child's mother says the group walked up to her property and threatened her family. The people accused in the case said the confrontation started when someone at the party threw an object at one of the trucks. But the mother's accusations and video of the incident were enough to charge several people with violating Georgia's street gang terrorism law. So these white people, they try to flip, they try to flip it and try to say that the black people threw something at the truck and that's what happened. Well, unfortunately for these... <laughs> I'm sorry, this type of shit makes me happy because these evil cr fucking crazy ass pigskin retards are getting exactly what they deserve. I wish that we can get justice like this more often, but it doesn't happen. It, you know, it almost seems as if black people have to live for white people to get punished. I don't know if you guys have noticed that, but it's almost like white people have, black people have to live in these certain, you know, violent instances for white people to get punished as if, uh, you know, as if the, the government rewards, you know, white people for killing black people and punish them for not killing them. <laughs> but anyways, oh man, I just love gloating at these people because... They sit here and they try to beg and say, oh, we're not, I'm not really like this. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please. If you have a Confederate fucking flag, you aren't sorry. You are not sorry at all. You don't. <laughs> come on. That's just like me having a Black Panther flag and saying, oh, I was just kidding. That's not really me. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Anyone who goes out their way to buy that type of mem memorabilia. You believe in it. You know what I'm saying? You fucking believe in that shit. Because it's not like they sell Confederate flags everywhere. You go searching for that shit. Or whoever, if somebody gave it to you, they went searching for it. And if you didn't believe in that, you wouldn't even have that type of items. But now, since they're going to prison for 15 years, now they want to sit here and fucking cry and say, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not really like that. <laughs> you only feel that way because you get, you got caught. <laughs> And now you're being in prison for <laughs> 15 years. And they should just throw her in a fucking fryer. Throw both of them in the fucking fryer. Just, you know, open up a big pit with flames and just throw them in there. Man, y'all sorry. <laughs> oh, I enjoy looking at these people's face. <laughs> oh, man. You know, it feels good against some type of justice because usually this stuff doesn't happen. You know, white people can go around and terrorize black people. But look at y'all. Y'all learn today. Y'all learn today. <laughs> now, here, I'm about to continue with this.
A Douglas County judge sentenced two of them this morning. And Fox 5's Portia Brenner was in court for today's emotional period. Portia? <laughs> yeah, I can tell you the emotion in that courtroom was palpable. You've got members of three families, the two defendants in this case, as well as the families out of those holding that birthday party. Let's go ahead and take a look at the video from court this morning. Uh, the bottom line, the sentence is here. 26-year-old Jose Ismael Torres sentenced to 20 years. He was uh, ordered to serve 13 years for uh, terroristic threats, gang activity, uh, among other charges from stemming from this incident back in July of 2015. Well, I might as well go ahead and enjoy the Aryan Nation Brotherhood if you ain't part of it already because he's going to be in there for a minute. <laughs> but yeah, these motherfuckers pulled up to this fucking party terrorizing these black people with fucking shotguns. Yeah, your ass, you deserve to be locked away when you do type of shit like that. Because when you're doing stuff like that in the heat of the moment, a lot of people don't think. They could have easily, you know, start shooting up the place. And I am sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry because y'all being locked up. Typical. Typical. It's just, it's just disgusting. you up here begging for mercy and shit. And then with her also 25 year old Kayla Ray North. Uh, and then she starts cooning. She goes off and cooning. I forgive you. I forgive you. No, look, if you for well, I, I can't say if you forgive them, you, you wouldn't put charges on them or whatever. But it's like, what the fuck? Why do I? What is up with black people not knowing how to not say, I forgive you? Why do black people always feel like we have to say we fucking forgive people? I remember this one time. I remember there was this show that I watched. I, I, I watched like a little clip of the show uh, on YouTube, and there was this black woman, a sister who I, I think she like, hmm, I think she robbed this white woman. I can't remember what she did to her. I can't remember if she shot her. I think she may have shot her and, and shot her face off or something like that. And the white woman is now like all messed up and just hideous. And uh, you know, even though the black woman went to prison, she served her time. She got out, and now she's doing you know positive things with her life. Uh, they brought her whoever I can't remember what show it was, but it was like one of those daytime, um, you know, like uh, talk shows like Oprah or Wendy Williams, one of those type of shows, Montel. Uh, and you know they they brought the sister on there and they brought her victim on there too and the victims I guess like a uh, family member or friend and the you know the white woman was like look what you did to me now I'm afraid every day I'm scared um, I'm, I'm hideous or something like that I don't know if she said <laughs> she was hideous but she was you know saying that this basically the sister changed her life just because she wanted to rob her or something like that and the sister apologized, you know what I'm saying? She's like, I'm sorry. Uh, you have to learn how to forgive. And the white woman, <laughs> she wasn't trying to forgive shit. She like, you ruined my fucking life. You made me into a hideous beast. I, I'm not forgiving you. She didn't say that exactly, but I, I believe she said that she does not forgive. Nah, she may have. She, I don't think she said anything because she didn't say. I don't remember her saying anything about, yeah, I forgive you. She was fucking bitter. She was still <laughs> She was still fucking bitter. Even though her sister was like, I'm sorry. You know, I wasn't thinking back then. I was on drugs when I was doing that, you know. And I wasn't in my right frame of mind when I did that. I served my time. I paid my debt to society. Uh, and now I'm out. I'm doing good things. I'm sorry. And, you know, I thought it was stupid because if I was that black woman or if I was anybody in that situation, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even let them bring me onto the fucking show. Why? So you can... You know, drag me down. I already paid my debt to society, and that's going to be with me for the rest of my life. You know, what happened, happened. I'm sorry about it. There's nothing I can do about it. You know, if I can go back and change it, I would. You know, I'm sure she would. Uh, but, you know, the white woman, she didn't give a fuck. And that's how us black people need to be. We need to understand when we're victims, when we're truly victims, we shouldn't have to apologize for being fucking victims. Let them get what they deserve because they're getting exactly what they deserve. Maybe not exactly. Maybe they deserve death. I don't know. Um, but yeah, they're getting justice. 
you're being served justice. Don't sit there and fucking apologize about the shit. You know what I'm saying? They get, they're getting exactly what they deserve. Because guess what? If there was no police or anything like that, those white people would probably be lynching you instead of fucking terrorizing you. They'd be lynching your asses. So don't feel sorry about shit. I am glad that they're being locked away. Because this doesn't usually happen. This is fucking rare. So I'm happy about this shit. <laughs> I'm happy to see their sad faces because I know they're not serious. I know that they're they're indeed serious. Like they're 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 sorry as hell. They're sorry as hell that that they're being penalized for this shit. Because trust me, if they weren't being penalized for it, they wouldn't be sorry. They'll probably be off chilling, sipping some beer, sipping, uh, you know, crack them up in a, tw a twelve pack or go and buy a twenty four pack. Yeah, man, this butts on you. <laughs> I thought these little rednecks would be doing. <laughs> oh, I kill myself. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, you know, they wouldn't be sorry if they didn't get caught doing this shit. And they end up getting arrested. They end up getting charged. They end up being sentenced, sentenced. Sorry. And now they're being locked away. That's why they're sorry. If, if this was back in the 1940s, 1950s, 1960s, guess what? They would have got away with this shit. And they would not be sorry at all. They'll probably be terrorizing and lynching some other fucking family. So we need to learn to stop being sorry about shit where we have no control over. When we're fucking victims. Accept the shit. Like, okay. You know, even if you don't want to say anything. But I'll be the type of person in the courtroom and be like, nope. You knew what you were doing. You said that you're sorry, but you knew what you was doing. You, you, you pointed guns at my family. I didn't know if he was going to shoot us or not. You were pointing guns at fucking kids. No, I don't forgive you. And you're getting exactly what you deserve. <laughs> that would have shut their asses down. <laughs> they would have sat there quiet. And I probably would have poured the truth on it. Like, the only reason why you're sorry is just because you're being penalized right now for what you did. You're being locked away because of your actions. That's the only reason why you're sorry now. Because now your whole life has flashed before your eyes. I think she said one dude is, um... I can't remember how old, but the dude wasn't that old, you know what I'm saying? So he's going to be in his 40s when he get out, because I believe she said she, he was in his 20s, you know. I, I believe he was like in his mid-20s or something like that, so by the time he gets out, he's going to be about 40 years old. That's 15 years of your life gone. And the woman, she's probably around the same age too, so, you know, I, man, fuck that shit, you know. It doesn't have to happen to me for me to feel this way. And that's the problem with our people. We have this type of like weak mindset to where we don't like to understand uh, other black people's problems until it happens to us so it finds its way on our doorstep you know a lot of us don't care about other you know our black people being shot killed we don't like to care about other black people and, and their problems until it happens to us so when our kids are killed now when our kid our personal child is shot killed ran over or whatever now we want to be fucking advocates you know what I'm saying? Nah, not me. So what I'm saying is that this doesn't have to happen to me for me to feel this way. You know what I'm saying? Because most people feel the way I feel right now once when they become a victim. Not me. But anyways, continue with this video so I can laugh a little bit more. And sentenced to 15 years with six to serve. Ooh, ooh. She actually stood up and <laughs> apologized to the family for her role and what happened that night when that convoy... <laughs> Nah, we'll full screen by that. Nah. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I, I, I do kind of feel wrong by laughing at them, but. <laughs> uh, yeah, y'all fucked up and y'all y'all young too, man. She looks like she's like in her 30s and shit, like her late, her mid 30s and shit. But you know, white people, they age bad. I think this guy, yeah, I think she said that he's 26. This dude look old as fuck for 26. He, 26, he look like he's like 30 fucking 5 or some shit. <laughs> uh, pickup trucks uh, with uh, people carrying Confederate flags and uh, shotguns pulled up to their home and pointed weapons at the children and the other people at the party. Here's the at children! These fucking rednecks came out there with confe sorry, Confederate flags pointing shotguns at fucking kids. And you forgive these people? Oh, hell no. Nope. Not at all. She said. 
We all know that you were in the wrong. <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? You knew you were in the wrong? Well, guess what? So do we. Does it make anything better? No, it actually made things worse. <sighs> Look at it. this devil. That's devil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's not you. That's not you. Get the fuck out of here, man. When you're doing shit like that, that shows your real fucking self. Really, it does. When you do dumb shit like that, I mean, nobody just randomly goes out there and buy Confederate flags. Nobody does that. Like I said, stuff like that, you have to go and find. You go out your way to find shit like that. And they come out there with shotguns. Who fucking does that shit for fun? Man. That's not me because I don't want to be arrested and in prison. I don't want to get outside these fucking walls. Uh, sorry. No, sorry. I would never walk up to you and say those words. But you did. <laughs> uh, but you did. She said, I would never walk up to you and say those words. Well, you did it even worse. You drove up to them, you know, shouted, call them names, call them niggers, you know, show your little Confederate flag and point shotguns at them. She said, you will walk up to them and say, yeah, you're right. Because you probably do it while driving, you fucking coward. Like a lot of these races. Like I said, the one time where uh, this guy, he called me a nigger. Oh, well, that story didn't go through because... Um, the audio is fucked up on that video, but I'm gonna go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a video talk about that again. But anyways, so the one time this white guy called me, my sister. Hmm, it was me, and my sister, and I'm not sure if it was friends or if we were with other family members. But anyways, over where we lived, uh, we were crossing the street. And this white dude, like as we were crossing the street, he it was a four-way stop sign. It's not like we were jaywalking or anything like that or being, you know, risky. So as we were crossing the street, the car was pulling up. The car was at least like about hmm, 50 feet away from the, the, the four-way stop. We're in the process of crossing the street, doing nothing wrong. Comes to complete stop. And as we're crossing over to, as we're almost making it to the other side of the crosswalk, he speeds past us and he says, niggers. He said something else, so I couldn't remember. But he, I remember him saying something, something, niggers. And he sped off. So, yeah, a lot of white people, <laughs> yeah, you're right. You know, you, you wouldn't have walked up and said that to her, but, you know, you would have uh, definitely still did the same shit you would have done. I mean, that you did do. Because that's the type of person you are. Hey, don't she look like a fucking devil? This damn devil. I had to take a moment of silence for this this coonish fucking behavior, man. Because I let mine die a long time ago. That that coon fucking behavior. Mine's died a long time ago. So I had to take a moment of silence for that shit. But, you know, also, I was taken aback by this coonish bullshit, man. I just, I still can't believe it. Black people. 20 fucking 17. We still forgiving every goddamn thing. <laughs> the motherfucker don't even have to ask for forgiveness, man. Fucking, we could trip over a damn curb and, and, and tell the curb that we forgive it. <laughs> Oh shit! <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, man. I don't back from laughing, man. <laughs> that's the, that's the type of goofy ass fucking mindset that a lot of us have, and why? Because the Christian Church. Oh my God, the modern day Christian Church. <sighs> Nothing more than a social gathering. You know, we're old hens flock. 
they flock there so they can gossip jump up and enjoy that's the only fucking exercise they get all week running their fucking mouths pretending like they're speaking in tongues and possessed by the holy fucking ghost <laughs> uh, if you really follow Christ like I said before you know you're going to find you the Hebrew Israelite community out there most of them are true followers of you know who people ignorantly call Christ uh, and the most high you know the, the God of the Bible I put quotes around God um, but the God of the Bible the reason why I put quotes around God is because God is a pagan word uh, but the most high Yahweh um, but anyways man these fucking Christians they kill me they fucking kill me man Anyways, I forgive all of you. Hmm. Do you really mean that, or are you just, you know, saying shit? Is she getting all emotional shit? It's all emotional for. Are you remembering how they rolled up on you with shotguns? Is that, is that what's about to jerk a tear out of there? Or, or is it you sympathizing with them? That shit makes me sick. Y'all want to sit there and cry. They're trying to elicit the sympathy of the jury. <laughs> uh, oh man, or maybe there is an old jury. I don't know. I was thinking in a case like this, uh, there will be a jury. But yeah, <laughs> that's what they're trying to do elicit sympathy. That's exactly what they're trying to do. They want to pull off that that you know innocent, sorry. You know, white boy thing where you know with a white boy right one white guy, young white dude was like a few years back where <laughs> of course this guy's a fucking idiot. He calls on the phone, I think he was like talking to his, his parents. And he molested I believe he molested like some young white boy. And he was being sentenced. Um <laughs> and during his sentencing. Uh the judge put out the audio of a call that he made to like his family member or a friend or whoever it was telling them that oh they're not gonna give me a harsh sentence because I'm a white boy with blonde hair and blue eyes <laughs> and they played that shit back to them during the court proceedings <laughs> yeah, I, I can't remember but I remember this dude I believe he got like over 10 years in prison for that shit <laughs> He was sitting there crying. It was funny because he was sitting there crying. Oh yeah, yeah, that's what he said. He said all I have to do is just cry, and they won't. Their sentencing won't be so harsh because I'm a, I'm a young white boy with blonde hair and blue eyes. So he was crying throughout the the court proceedings, and the judge basically said, "Hey, I know your game. You think we're stupid," uh, and then he played the tape for him. And after that, the tears stopped. <laughs> shit was hilarious because he knew it was busted. He knew it was busted. So that's probably what they're trying to do too. You know, they're trying to elicit the sympathy of the uh, the jurors because I'm sure most of them are probably white people. I did jury duty um, for the first time this past summer, and it was me. Excuse me. It was me and one other black person out of 12 jurors and it's funny because they said this is what this what our city represents you know that's complete bullshit man because uh, Columbus Ohio even though white people are starting to move more and more in into well no he said county I think he said this represents the county that we stand so if he said that then he's telling the truth because uh, Franklin County is mostly white people I probably said like blacks are only probably about like 30 percent of Franklin County uh, or maybe even 20% of Franklin County 
Uh, but Columbus, Ohio, the inner city, we're probably about probably like six, seven years ago, we were more probably like about sixty percent of the city. Uh, but now more and more blacks are moving out of the city, moving into suburbs, while more and more white people are moving into the city. And I would say that we probably fell down to probably like thirty percent of the city, probably thirty percent of the inner city uh, is made up of blacks. But um, yeah, <laughs> shit's hilarious. Let me go back to this coonish shit and these crocodile tears. Uh, Judge William McLean noted before sentencing uh, that given the nature of the language used, uh, the um, heavy use of the N-word uh, directed at the people and children at that birthday party, he said that there was no doubt that this was a racially motivated crime. And he also said driving around town in a convoy of pickup trucks with Confederate flags and waving weapons was seen as a threat not just to this family, but to many people who ended up calling 911 that day. He said that is why he felt like the defendants had to be held accountable. There were other people who were charged in this case. They pled. They're serving uh, two to four years. We'll have much more on this story coming up tonight. So see, the fucking white judge gets it. He understands that this was no joke, that these people did this with intent, that they are those fucking people that they claim that they're not. Because these people deliberately got into their fucking vehicles, went on and had a fucking convoy. So that means more than one fucking car driving around with Confederate flags and shotguns, waving at people, calling people in words. See, even the judge, he don't buy their bullshit. But black people are so fucking delusional. We wanna forgive people. We wanna believe that, you know, Ah, we always want to see the fucking good in people and shit. It's just ridiculous. It makes me sick, man. But anyways, I'm glad these evil pigs and devils are locked up. And other people are, are being locked up too. I'm glad about it. Um, and that's basically all I have to say. You guys take care. Talk to you later. Shalom. Shalom.